Hello YouTube, so today I was tumbling as per usual um, and I subscribed to 87 Days Before aka I call it Ambrosia aka Rachel um, and she did a tag video and it was the confessions of a beauty guru tag. Uh, I don't consider myself a beauty guru yet, I don't think I'm to that point, <laughs> um, but one day, maybe one day. Anyway, actually, you know what? I don't really even really like the title beauty guru. When people call themselves that, it kind of sounds a little bit pretentious, um, a little bit inflated of them, I guess. I don't know. I just think guru is a very big title and one that you shouldn't give yourself. It should be something that people, someone else gives you that title. It's an honor, really. Um, wow. I'm talking about this like it's the president of the United States or something. It's an honor. It's an honor to be a beauty guru. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I'm just someone who makes videos for fun. Um, I don't even know if you can classify me as a beauty per se YouTuber because I don't film tutorials yet. I'm getting there. <laughs> I promise I'm getting there. Let's go on to the questions. There's 14 of them and I'll list them in the doobly-doo. Got my cactus fig tea from Teopia. It's delicious. Anywho, the first question is, how many hours a week do you spend filming or editing your videos? Um, on a good week, and by good I mean bad week for me socially, but good YouTube-wise, um, I can film four or five videos a week, and each one takes about, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes to film, um, like set up and everything included. And to edit each of those, I edit and re-edit them. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, not that I do a whole lot to them, I just change the style, I guess, of editing every once in a while. Remember how I used to have a lot of those comic book transitions? I've done away with those and just, I tend to like the, uh, jump cuts now. Anywho, um, editing each one takes about half an hour to 45 minutes, so let's just say half an hour for the sake of easy math, because not good at that. Wow guys, it's been too long since I've been out of school. I'm gonna have to bust out the calculator to do a simple math. Wow, okay, so I just did the math and if I did 45 minutes of editing and 20 minutes of filming on each video, and I did five videos that week, oh my goodness, gosh, it's um five hours, almost five and a half hours. That's a lot. <laughs> um, but most weeks I, well I guess the norm for me would be filming three videos a week, so that's not as bad. Not as bad. Next, number two is, are you a spender or a saver? I think habitually I am between a spender and a saver more on the spender side, but I can save like no tomorrow when I need to. Like right now I'm kind of a saver out of necessity because um, I literally have about two dollars in my bank account right now. Yeah. Um, Chris's parents were nice enough to lend us some money so we can, you know, live for <laughs> until I get a job. Anyways, that's, yeah, it's a bit embarrassing. Um, but if anybody wants to hire me in the Oakville area as a makeup artist, photographer, or just as a part-time, full-time employee, I'm your girl. Next is number three. It is when is easiest for you to film? I'd say mid morning to early afternoon. Um, the light's really nice right now. And um, I don't know, no one's around you really. I mean, once once I start working, it's gonna change because I know I'll be working during the day. Um, but I don't have a good nighttime lighting setup yet. I mean, it's decent, I think, but it's not the greatest, and, uh, yeah. Oh, it was the, the Lux Box Glim Box thing that I filmed at nighttime with that lighting. But yeah, mid-morning to early afternoon, nice lighting. Number four is, what makes talking in front of a camera comfortable for you? This one, um, it was never uncomfortable for me, and it's, it's not uncomfortable for me now, um, it's just that, you know that little in your head dialogue conversations that you have in yourself in your head when there's just like no one around, nothing else to think about, um, just day to day life, you have an ongoing dialogue in your head, well at least I do, 
not like, it's not like I'm talking to myself in my head, it's just there's this dialogue or commentary going on in my head and that is, it's, it's pretty funny, I'm not gonna lie, I, I like how funny I am in my head, but then when I'm filming it's like that dialogue just stops and I can't get that dialogue going and out my mouth into the camera. It, it doesn't really work. So it's not that I'm uncomfortable per se, it's just that I can't get what's in my head to have the right words regularly when I'm talking. Because I think I'm a type of person that's used to feeding off whoever I'm talking to and just kind of taking on their style of speech. I guess I kind of take on their sense of humor and their mannerisms just because I feel like it's out of habit, but I think it makes me a little bit more relatable to. So it's not that I'm not being myself. I am being myself in that being me is taking on those characteristics and a uh, sense of humor and their mannerisms and their speech and stuff. So when I'm just talking to the camera and having to not have anything to feed off of, it's a little bit hard for me to have my thoughts come freely through my mouth. That was a really long explanation, but it was a good one, I think. Pretty accurate, if I do say so myself. So, question number five is what is your worst makeup slash hair habit? Um, I think it's just not doing it. <laughs> I do not do my hair, I don't blow dry straighten anything. This is like doing my hair for me, just pinning it back on the side. When I had my pixie cut, I used to um, use pomade or paste to like put it up, but and that was super super easy. It's, it's as easy as putting this clip in. Actually, probably easier. <laughs> um, so I think I just don't do it out of laziness slash I don't feel a need to. Also, it keeps my hair healthier. Um, and for makeup, yeah, I don't I don't do my makeup if I'm just going out shopping or to, well maybe I will if I'm going shopping like to the mall shopping but not if I'm going to the grocery store or just running errands or something like that um otherwise my worst makeup habit is I don't know I don't use face primer all that often but I don't know if that's a bad habit I just don't feel a need for it <laughs> number six is what's one quote you wish the world would live by honestly <laughs> recently it is the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. In the news, and I've just been watching What Would You Do recently, um, just a lot of people making bl blanket statements about any group of people, whether it be race, religion, sexual orientation, um, financial income. I'm hearing blanket statements everywhere recently, and that's... <sighs> You can't do that. Like, there's no such thing as a stereotype. There's, oh, on Tumblr, um, there was a gif of, it was Hitler, and he was being filmed, I think, or interviewed or something, and he was flirting with this lady that was interviewing him, and people were, like, appalled by it, and I'm like, I mean, I guess I was shocked, too, at first, because you expect him to just be purely evil and then you realize oh yeah he's a human being too and um, there was one comment that was like uh, you can't stereotype evil either and nothing can be stereotyped nothing can be blanket statemented uh, yeah so just think of others as you would have them think of you you want to be thought of as an individual so why do we uh, I don't know why do we blanket statement anything really I don't know even when people are like oh men and they just like, just girls with their girls knives. I mean, you want to empathize with them, but <laughs> you can't say, oh, men are, men are a certain way, or that's just how they are. Or even girls, we're, we're not all a certain way. I don't even think there are tendencies within the genders. Anyways, I'm just, I'm rambling now. I should make a separate video about that. <laughs> um, the next, so yeah, the golden rule. That's basically it. <laughs> Seven is how long do you spend getting ready every day? Getting ready for what? I mean, it depends, right? If I'm going out with some friends or something, I will not do anything. Because usually going out with friends, with for me, consists of going to watch a movie at one of their houses, 
or just like driving around aimlessly. So really no preparation has to be done here. Um, the only time I'll actually spend time getting ready is for like formal occasions. That's when I spend the most time on my hair and makeup or if I'm going to go shopping at a makeup store like MAC or Sephora or something. Uh, yeah, I know it sounds really lame, but it's the same thing as if you are a gamer and you go shopping at EB Games or something. Say the employee there strikes up a conversation with you about games. You're not just going to pretend like you know nothing about gaming, right? Um, this is probably a really bad analogy, but the way I show that I know what I'm talking about with with makeup is I show it on my face with my makeup. So it just feels good to go into a Mac or Sephora or something and have one of the employees either compliment me or just like I couldn't strike up a conversation actually feel like I look like I know what I'm talking about with them just because they know what they're doing too and it's it's a nice, it's a nice feel, it's good feels for me. Oh, that's not even the question, is it? It's how long do I spend getting ready? So if every day I throw on some clothes, um, if I'm going out somewhere where I actually want to throw on makeup, 20 minutes if I'm actually paying attention, an hour if I am watching videos or just not paying attention to what I'm doing, if I'm doing something else while I'm trying to get ready. Um, yeah, an hour is like the maximum, I think. So number six is, what's your favorite YouTube video on YouTube? I honestly cannot pick one single video. Um, I can say Halloween series by makeup artists are my favorite kind of video to watch. Um, but if I had to pick one video, it has to be a very Potter musical. It really does. I know it's... Uh, broken into parts on YouTube, but it is on YouTube and those, that group of people, I just love them to death. Um, I know that there's some new, some new cast members. Uh, I haven't seen the most, two, two recent productions they put on, the Star Trek one and the Batman one. I really, really need to get on that because I love them. I love that group of people. Um, Darren Chris is a musical genius basically and an acting genius um i do watch glee but that's just i watched glee before he was on it too uh <laughs> anyways yeah a very part of musical if you don't know what it is go watch it but make sure you have a good chunk of time set aside because it's really long but it is amazing just yeah go watch it number nine is who is a youtuber that you watch who deserves more views slash subscribers than they have um, honestly guys, I have not been watching that many videos lately, uh, and lately I mean the past two months. I have no idea why. I've just gotten caught up with, I don't know, other <laughs> other things and haven't really put aside the time to watch as many as I should be. Um, but, and so both these people do have a decent amount of subscribers, but I think that they are really really good at what they do um and uh yeah i mean they could always use more subscribers it's not like they have an insane amount like i don't know like some people like sell me awake he has a gazillion subscribers or like the shaytards or something <laughs> anyways so there's i love jesse 444 she does um natural themed things like she subscribes to eco emmy and she reviews those and she uh, talks about how she went natural and stuff, uh, and she really knows what she's talking about. She really, really does. I think she's in her, either in her first or second year of university slash college. Um, but yeah, she she really knows her stuff. And so if you are looking to go natural or just want to switch out some of the not so good products and for more natural products in your daily routine, she's a good one to watch the videos of. The next one is Tea Makeup G. She is great. She is a makeup artist and she um, tells it like it is. She won't tell you to, that you need something when you actually don't. Um, she does anti-hauls, which are like <laughs> how to not spend money on all this stuff that you don't need. I mean, she, I know that a lot of gurus 
collect makeup and I'm kind of the same way. I love having full collections of things. Um, well, I would if I had the money <laughs> for it. Um, but she does not collect makeup. She just, she buys makeup that will be useful and she, that you will probably use up. And it's, it's great when, it's a great feeling when I use up a piece of makeup. I mean, it's not so great because I had to go out and buy another one, but it's like, yes, I, this is worth my money. And, um, she's also a brilliant makeup artist. So the next question is, number 10, what's one thing you're excited about in the upcoming year? I don't know, guys. I was going to go to IMAX, but looking like financially that's probably not going to happen. It's really sad because I was supposed to go last year, but then, um, I don't know what happened with that. I was supposed to go last year, and then I couldn't find anybody to come with me, which was really sad. Um, I don't know. I just wasn't a big fan of my school year last year. <laughs> um, but yeah, this year I don't think it's going to happen financially, but I'm looking forward to Chris and I's three year anniversary. I know that's really, really lame, but yeah, I'm really excited for that. I don't know. I, there's nothing super specific that I'm really looking forward to other than finally living on my own, like legitimately not in res. Um, I mean, I was living on my own last year, but that was in my hometown. I mean, my parents were right there. Um, it's not like living on my own is a big, big deal because I've I don't know, been kind of on my own for three years now, but it's just really nice to live with Chris and to kind of be growing up in the cheesiest sense of the word. So my battery died and I had to go grab my spare camera, which I don't like as much, even though it's basically the same thing. <laughs> um, anyways, so I'm just going to hurry through the next few, just because I feel like this video is getting pretty long. Eleven is, what's your most awkward filming moment? I didn't really, I don't think I've ever really had an awkward filming moment. I mean, when people walk through my videos without realizing that I'm filming, that's, I don't know, kind of awkward, I guess, but I, it's very easy to edit out, so it's really not that awkward. Um, I guess some of my old, old videos are kind of awkward because I don't like them anymore at all, but it's not like I'm going to take them down. I just don't like them. I feel like I could do them a lot better now and I probably will end up doing a few reshoots of those videos. Uh, number 12 is how long does it take you to prep for a video? Up to 20 minutes I guess, up to half an hour really if I'm doing makeup. Um, if I'm not doing makeup it takes like 5 minutes because I just have to find a decent spot for lighting and set up my camera. <laughs> That's really it. Um, 13. Are you wearing pants in brackets, jeans or skirt? Right now, are you, are you wearing PJ bottoms or sweatpants? I'm actually normally wearing jeans in all my videos because it makes me feel more awake and productive and that I'm actually put together. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, when I'm wearing PJ pants, I don't feel ready for anything. I don't feel... I feel like I don't, don't want to do anything when I'm in PJ pants. Number 14. The last one, by the way. What am I most proud of in my life? Um, <laughs> something that Rachel said made me think about something that's basically the same in my life. She said her relationship with Chris and then changed to like her relationships with people in general. But I am really proud of my relationship with my Chris. Our boyfriend's names are the same, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I'm really proud of our relationship. We have a type of relationship that we don't really fight. <laughs> that might sound really, like, fake. Like, most people are like, oh yeah, no couple never fights. And we actually don't really. I mean, we, we disagree on things, but we never really argue about them. We have to, we discuss things, like, actual conversational discussions, like, political views or like views on life in general. If one of us has a problem that something the other one's doing or something, we ha we're really good about saying it before it becomes the kind of thing where we're expecting the other person to know that it's bugging us. Um, and that's just not a good place to be, but we're really good about that. Um, yeah, we did go through that rough patch 
uh, well, six months, so more like a rough football field um, a while back, but that is over, and it was just a weird, weird time in both our lives um, that, yeah, we don't really talk about because it was weird. But yeah, it was just a weird, confusing time in, in our lives, and we'd rather just both pretend that it never happened. I mean, we don't, because that's just not healthy, but yeah, that's basically it. Okay, the second thing that I'm most proud of is my ability to teach myself stuff. Um, the things that I am best at, I have taught myself, like makeup and, um, and it's really hard to film when someone's like standing over you. Okay, um, and taught myself guitar for the most part. Um, what else? I mostly taught myself photography, even though I did go to school for it, um, I was pretty self-sufficient at it before I started school. <laughs> Chris thinks I'm being full of myself, but I really am better at learning things when I teach myself. Which is why learning the standard is so hard for me, because Chris has to be in the car with me oh, for it to work properly. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the tag video. I'll see you in my next video. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.